So I'm painting this directly from memory and uh, it's a scene I like because the challenge of this particular scene is um, is how to create uh, distance when the lay of the land is very undulating, it's very up and down and um, you want that sense of the road, the path disappearing out of sight, coming back into view. Um, and, and as I say, just making it look convincing. So I'm just dr I've drawn this out rapidly. So bear with me while I tackle this one. Not too much talking in this one. Um, it's a case. Of I hope that you just observe um, directly from watching me paint. I might not use all of these shapes that I'm putting in, but it's a. It, it, this is just to start me off. It's a scale thing, so this will be a near gate post, and here the gate that lived between these two posts is long gone. As I say, it's um. It's a scene not far from where I live, and it's from it really. I'm working from memory, which is something I I like to do a lot because um, of how it uh, forces you into that sort of creative uh, area of the brain. And let's see how it pans out. I'm just going to get a wash on. Try to make it as atmospheric as possible. So I'm just putting some water on here. I'll just offer up. Uh, this is a colour called Verdita Blue. It's a, an opaque blue. I'll just let that swim around quite a bit back there. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to exploit this area here, the bead. That's the area, of course, where the uh, water and paint meets the dry paper. So I stay here. Rather than paint right through the painting, I stay up here. So I'll keep adding slightly stronger paint to this bead area. And that's just a stronger version of the original colour, which is, again, Verdita Blue. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of lemon yellow. It might be a bit too much, so let's just knock that back a little bit. Tiny bit of red. And then I can move that around and uh, form some shapes back there. I can go further up. It's a very uh, hilly, mountainous region here. And um, so it's quite nice, this back area, for creating this soft disappearing distance but here around this area here is my path it's probably the furthest point of the path that you can actually see so. let's put in some slightly more rapid brush mark here so that we can create some light in the mid territory in this area here there's no real point where I say the this is sky and this is land it's a soft atmospheric background um, there will be a lot of green up there because it is it is a reflected colour um, that if there is any sky up there showing at all it's reflecting some of the um, colours in the landscape so I just go a little bit more neutral I think so I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of um, indigo blue Nice and watery, still keeping things very watery. I'm 
And it's quite nice because however strong I go in terms of tonal value up here, then um, I will have to play up or down the rest of the landscape accordingly in these increasingly um, in these distances that are creep forward that are creeping forward to us. So just a little just a little break up of colour. We'll just put a little bit of alizarin crimson back there. Let's create a little bit of purple in that in all that green. Let's try a little bit of lift off here. So a thirsty brush, I'll just swipe through areas like this. Again, it's just a suggestion of light hitting the landscape in certain patches. What I love about mountainous regions, um, where there's um, you know where there's a lot of light play. Uh, is is just that it's just how much you can play around with the tonal values in areas and then perhaps create this here which would be a sense of of soft soft movement in the misty background and that's just from taking paint back off So I'm going to move forward. I'm staying out of the path for the moment. I'm just going to move forward with something a little bit warmer. So I just picked up some raw sienna here. I'll just paint around the posts for the moment. I'm not painting around them in a careful fashion. They're just. I'm just thinking I'll stay out of them for for a little while. So I'm guessing where the temperature changes, but I feel as though it's sort of around here somewhere, this sort of mid territory. So I'm taking that warm raw sienna up to about there. Everything beyond that point is a lot cooler. Colour mix that I really like is um, what I'm using now actually, and that is raw sienna with a little bit of alizarin crimson in the mix. Working wet into wet, I keep delivering fresh paint. So it's, I, it, I think more about just the delivery than the than uh, perhaps I do the actual distribution of the paint so I can worry about the distribution of the paint the sort of shape that I'm making because the distribution what I mean by this is that I'll just deliver to the general area the color that I want to see there and I'll make my decision as to whether that should be warm or cool um, after that it becomes distribution and I suppose tied in with that distribution part of it of the work is shape making is saying well that bit of land there um, is a little bit paler so it's, it's perhaps facing the light catching the light a bit more because it's sort of it's an upland a, a little small area of up, upland and perhaps the darker areas and if I were to go into those darker areas with something like cerulean blue or that verditer blue again, that might suggest that um, even though I'm making, just making a delivery, really, that's all I'm thinking. I'm making a delivery here, making a delivery here. Um, I then take the brush over to the water tub and um, take the paint and water out that I've just been using and use that just to manipulate and make my shapes distribute if you like so so let's uh, create sort of 
suggestion of this path here. So very little uh, water and paint in this brush. I'm deliberately scumbling across the surface here with very little, as I say, uh, of anything in the brush. I think we need now just to I'm gonna feel as though you know we should have hint of some grasses and things growing in the middle of this path. It's probably long seen any real heavy traffic. It's been mostly pedestrian and and sheep. So there'll be a lot of grassy tumps and things like that popping up. Again, those are just deliveries. I deliver this very abstract shape. Um, I'm in my water tub again, and I'll just manipulate some of those shapes that I've delivered, like this. I'll speed dry this. Actually, before I speed dry it, I think I'll just take advantage of the state of the paper up here and um, just put in a very bluey green, so verditer blue in this case with a little bit of lemon yellow and we can suggest some of these gorse bushes, various areas of flora Perhaps a little bit more of the blue in here here I think what what um what I sort of think is useful if you can get into the habit of doing is whenever you get the opportunity, whenever you're taking a walk, even if you're not out purposely to paint, maybe the weather's bad or you haven't got time, you're simply going for a quick stroll. Um, try to sort of memorize, visually memorize those things around you when you're out. And it's surprising when you get into the habit of doing that, how they can help really help you to um, do as I'm doing here and that's just painting from mostly from memory really so a little bit more I think it's okay to go a little stronger in one or two of these runs of shape Just establishing some slightly heavier areas. Maybe these things at the back there. Yep, yeah, it's definitely still wet back there. So I have to be a little bit careful just how strong that paint is. And the colour temperature should be a lot, like a sort of powdery grey blue, I suppose. And, uh, just subtle hints of the landscape existing further back. There is a colour dominating here. Whoops. It is the Verdita blue. I 
I'm being quite, um, I need a slightly bigger brush actually because these are weak shapes but they are sort of sort of large areas even though they're a distance they're on mass this they may be lots of small shapes on mass so I use a bigger brush for that feel as though things are getting a little bit too dark because of the distance that they're at of course they, they, they shouldn't be too dark back there I really like just playing through large, gentle or subtle textures like this. A lot of water. And it's a, it's a technique that um, if you're not careful, if you don't get the the, the paint water ratio correct it will look terribly overworked so you've got to remember just to allow everything to swim around okay now I think I will speed dry just gonna put in the hint of the odd post here you know just uh, marking the edge of a, one field and uh, I'll now I'll speed dry So I'm going to move from sort of mid-ground to foreground now. I have the small brush back in my hand and I'm picking up Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Actually it would be an Ultramarine bur uh, Blue Burnt Sienna with a bit of the, the Verdita Blue in the mix. Just so it's not too dark at this stage. So I'll put another little fence, uh, uh, sorry, a um, a gate back here. Let's say it's something like that. It's just there. Pick up a little bit more of that paint mix. Show a little line perhaps here and there. Maybe a bit, some subtle inference of things going further back here. Like this. It says a very nondescript colour really in the background because you know, it, if anything, it's just a cool neutral. Um, colours dissipate. They you don't see the bright colours. You know, if you were to put, um, if you were to put, say, a high vis jacket, somebody, a figure wearing one of these high vis jackets, safety jackets, in the foreground here, it would be very bright, of course very noticeable but that same bright yellow garment um, 500 yards away a thousand yards away the further away that that color gets of course the less bright it gets so that's why I'm sort of rendering these details on the sort of neutral gray side 
I've got the I've got some um, potential shapes here that I could use. That's those are just natural um, cauliflowers, if you like, and um, I'm going to let them dry off completely before before I decide whether I want to, to keep them or not. So just keep moving forward here. Same mix, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and. Um, Gonna establish these closer posts, these these nearer posts here. Quite aggressive with the application of paint here. Whoops, that's a, a lot of paint. Even even too much paint for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so like to put a lot of paint on, and I'm quite, as I say, sort of almost aggressive with that application it's a hard push down with the brush quite often like this and we'll scrape into those posts a little bit perhaps they're still showing signs of the last shower that went through they're glistening in places this Love the texture in old wood posts, any old wood, old doors, old uh, barn doors and things like this. So I'm just going to put in what might be the moss clad uh, boundary here up to the posts. This is mostly the warmer colours, but there's also a lot of um, viridian green in here as well. So I'm making a delivery because the delivery is very is very loose, as you can see. So for uh, so that I can come back into it in a moment and manipulate and and sh and, and choose my shapes. But I'd better do that fairly quickly. It's drying quite quickly, actually. Just put something weak down here for the moment. Soften some of those areas now. Suggest it in here one or two old stones just poking their heads through four or five large shapes like this are much will always look much better than a mass of tiny scratches let's, uh, let's just press this palette knife in some places like this just to create a, a more uh, um, appropriate texture for what we're trying to convey here very organic mossy type sort of wall Just picked up a little bit of um, the, um, indigo blue on the knife here with a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, let's put the knife down for a moment. 
and I'll put some old wires that perhaps are just still clinging onto these posts nice and distorted as they've probably been tramped and tr tramped down by cattle and things over the over time maybe there's a maybe there's another post about there maybe there's two little old posts a little bit of spat spatter in that area that was my little reminder so the odd little do dob and dash there can suggest perhaps that this wire is barbed wire just the odd mark like that it's all you need don't need to go doing perfect little spikes of wire and then we'll tap in a little bit of texture here Like this. I'll speed dry this. And I'm sure you probably, the eagle eyed of you probably picked up on what I was doing there. While I was drying, holding the uh, hair dry in one hand, I'd spattered some water in these areas and with a, a tissue pressed down hard on where that water landed and I was able to take paint off and leave these lovely textural shapes. So all it needs to do really is just perhaps use a little bit of line work to delineate this this path a little bit better. So it comes down here like this and out really gets wide out here the path. So there's a big jump in uh, in scale. I think it's really important that you make your um, your scale jump like this because it's all too easy to, to do what effectively can end up looking like a very straight path with no tapering, with no sense of uh, diminishing scale, n no perspective. So open things up and. Um, have them have the width of the path as wide as your paper here and as it goes into the distance back there it's no more than half a centimeter wide right okay I'm just gonna put a some subtle shadow over this landscape and we'll call that uh, a finished painting picking up some ultramarine blue I'll make a lot, don't know how much of it I'll, I'll actually use until I start painting. But I always make more, much more than I, than I probably need. Because I, it, it's not good. Often when you're doing large, doing shadows on a large scale like this, it's best to try and um, not have to remix it. It's okay if you're working through individual areas throughout the painting and you're putting a small shadow here and there. But um, this is sort of like a blanket shadow from clouds above, that type of thing. So it's ultramarine blue, uh, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and a tiny bit of um, burnt sienna. So I like to start with a flat brush because I, the mop brush holds so much paint that if you deliver too much, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get off. So I'll start with something I know that... Um, will be quite watery so I, I just sort of see shadow across the landscape like this in a very abstract fashion and so it would go across the path perhaps there and, di and di so just dabbing off some some areas that I feel are a little too harsh shadow through here and I'm thinking of the lay of the land the shape of the land so I'm following my shadow is following the lay of the land as it slopes down from the left slopes down from the right now even water more watery this mix I'm, I'm putting more water in it this time and I'm just going to um, give a broader sense of shadow 
back there. And um, clean the brush. And I'll just soften the top edges of that shadow. Uh, just to indicate that that is a soft distant area back there. Like that. And then that all leaves us to do is the immediate foreground. So I'm leaving a nice band of um, area here of ground here without shadow. And we'll pop through here like this, cross here into there. Perhaps a little bit of light left in this corner. Shadow off that post. I've decided that there's a bit of light coming from the left. It doesn't mean to say all that shadow shape, you have to indicate that light is coming from the left. It may just be that, you know, the ambient light, um, there's more sort of ambient light further away from us because of the cloud, the amount of cloud that might be above that area. And it becomes the cloud that's throwing the shadow. I think we'll leave it like that. There we are, and we'll put the mount around it. I can't resist a little bit of white gouache. So we'll just take the rigger brush, straight down the neck of the white gouache, tube of white gouache. And um, you know, I I I think I always think it's important to have made the decision before you paint, perhaps hours, maybe even a day or two before you paint, as to what what sort of um, session are you going to have? Are you planning on having? Are, are you going to uh, do? You, maybe you have to work um, because you've said uh, you've agreed to doing a commission. Um, it would be very different to this, of course, um, but mostly, um, as I find myself in, you you probably just wanting to improve your skills, your painting skills, and this is definitely the way to do it. It's just a sort of, it helps you uh, loosen up and stay loose. So plan plan for that. Decide what it is that, that painting session is going to be about. Is it a discipline session that you that that you'll have to produce a result for, or is it um, pure enjoyment and, of course, uh, opportunity to um, to improve your skills? Anyway, let's leave it at that. And there's the mount. Um, as I say, you know, I, I could walk probably about a 20 minute half an hour walk from where I'm standing um, I could go to this area and um, the fact that it wasn't perfect it didn't look exactly like the place um, it, it doesn't bother me that that's not the purpose of this of this exercise of this painting it is um, more to do with um, improving what I can do uh, because of course when when push does come to shove and you are painting to um, the real thing, if you like, I think it's. But I think of it a bit of an, an analogy as like um, a, a professional athlete or something like that. You you can't be performing all the time. You've got to be practicing all the time, because that ratio um, is much more stacked in uh, rehearse and practice and training and improvement than it is actual performance time. So you've got to get that ratio right. You've got to, I think, you know, if you have something like three hours between now and the next time you paint, um, or three hours available, to, sorry, in the next seven days or so, decide, you know, put at least half of that time in uh, painting something random. Um, and then the remaining time, um, perhaps, you know, painting... 
paint is something that you might want to put in a frame. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want uh, updates as and when these videos get uploaded. And uh, thanks for your company.